I ride a skateboard to work. And lately there have been a ton of these little scooters and things popping up everywhere. And I thought, okay, let's look at maybe the cost of that versus owning one and what they're doing and how they're maybe changing transportation in cities. Actually, let's go for a quick ride. I wanna show you how prevalent these scooters are all over town, just so you get a sense of kind of what, what they're really like out there. Okay, so right off the bat, directly outside my building, we've got these bird scooters here. And the bird scooters cost a dollar to unlock and then 15 cents per mile. But there's a bit more to that story. So sometimes cruising through downtown can be a little sketchy because there's construction and traffic and stuff like that. Lots of cars, but generally they're going pretty slow. And so it's not that sketchy of a proposition. Train tracks, however, suck. So if you've never skated before in your life, then you're gonna be a lot more scared of this than if you have. But with a scooter, you have something to hold on to, so it's a bit easier, and so people are generally more comfortable with it. Now when you're on one of these, you're supposed to ride in the road like a bicycle or anything else, and you're supposed to have a helmet, like I have on here, but not a lot of people do that. So that's something else to consider, is like, are you gonna carry that with you at all times? What's up, buddy? <laughs> yeah. If you're planning on this being part of your commute, then you're definitely gonna have one with you. Um, whereas if it's just a casual thing, it's different. So what I'm considering here is assuming that this is what you're gonna be doing on a regular basis, like I do on my way to work, um, and like a lot of other people do. So that's kind of our use case here. The white Ferrari. So here's another one of the scooters, which is from Lime. Now Lime has electric powered bikes, regular bikes, and these scooters here. Now there are lots of options. These are kind of invading cities right now. So I want to just figure out like what's really, you know, the prices on these things, what's more economical, and what's more convenient and safe. All right, so let's take a look at the actual economics behind these things. And the first one I wanna look at is the Lime Bike, which is that little e-scooter thing. And they do have other options, but for my purposes today, I'm really interested in the electric options. So on a scale of one to three, with three being the most comfortable, I'm giving the Lime Bike the three because it has handles, it rides smooth, and the wheels are a decent size. So you'll run over most bumps and cracks in the road. So I think it's great. Uh, and any type of scooter like that, I think will be in the similar a uh, similar category. Now, the convenience of it is only a one because while they are often pretty densely packed in urban areas, they're not always available. And if you're coming like I do from a mile away, you may have to walk quite a ways to find one. So it's not always there. And again, that's a scale of one to three. Now, when you look at the cost, it starts out with a dollar to get it going. And it's about a dollar 50 per mile in my calculation. So let me explain that. It's a dollar to unlock it, and then it's 15 cents per minute. And the deal is that typically, if you could just you know fly unabated without having to stop for you know at full speed, you're gonna get a mile much quicker than you would rack up a dollar fifty. However, there are gonna be hills, there's gonna be stoplights and other traffic and reasons that you're gonna to have to slow down. So in the real world testing that I've done and the friends that I've talked to, it's about $1.50 that we get per mile. So for a one mile trip, you're looking at about $2.50. If you have to do this twice a day, that adds up to about five bucks a day. Multiply that times 50 weeks and five days a week, you're at 250 times five, gives you $1,250 per year if you were using the line bike e-scooter on a daily basis. Now, of course, these numbers are gonna vary. Maybe you have a longer commute, maybe you don't have anything in your way and you can get there quicker, so that trip costs a little bit less. So all of these numbers are estimates here, but they're real world estimates based on my testing and some other friends that I've had tested as well. 
channel. Now the next one to talk about is the Bird Scooter. And these are kind of the cool kids on the block. Now the Bird is very much like the Lime Scooters and I'm giving them the same rating, a three for comfort and a one for convenience. And there are slight differences in the power and the specs of these things, but I don't want to get into the nuances here. I want to kind of say high level to give you an overview. Now the cost is essentially the exact same. It's a dollar to start it up and then 15 cents per minute. Again, you know, average that out, you get about $1.50. And so overall it comes out to being about the same price. So $12.50 per year, pretty expensive, honestly. The next thing I want to compare is to an actual electric skateboard. Now Boosted is famous for having some of the best in the industry. So I'm going to compare two different Boosted boards to give you a sense of kind of the different options. Now the first one is the Stealth. The Stealth Boosted board is the long board. It's the newer one and it's pretty awesome from all the reviews I've seen online. I'm giving it a two for comfort because you don't have a handlebar, meaning if you're unfamiliar with being on a skateboard without holding on to something, it's going to be a little sketchy for you, but it is a longer board. So it's going to be going to be, you know, something you can get used to really quickly. Now, the convenience is pretty good because you own it. You have it with you wherever you go. But because it's a long board, it's going to be more cumbersome to deal with than some of the other options we'll look at. Now, the cost on this is pretty high. It starts out at $15.99 just to buy it. And then it's practically free to go every mile. So I actually did the math on the on the cost per mile and it comes out to about a tenth of a penny on average in the US so depending on your electricity rates but basically it's negligible on the cost and so yearly if you were to keep it for two years and you probably keep it for longer but let's cap it at two since most devices and things we buy nowadays don't last much longer than that you're looking at just under eight hundred dollars per year for the boosted stealth option now if you go back to the scooters it's actually quite a bit cheaper than those scooter options because those are going to cost you in theory the same price the same amount every year now the other option i wanted to look at from boosted is the mini s and this is basically the same technology packed into a smaller board and so because of that i'm giving it a comfort of one because not a lot of people are really going to be comfortable with it from the get-go you can certainly get there but if you've never really ridden a skateboard much in your life it's going to be pretty sketchy when you start out because it's smaller and you own it you'll always have it with you and you'll be able to kind of take it and travel with it in a relatively easy way. So I'm giving it the highest score on the convenience end and the lowest score on the comfort end. Now, if you're a seasoned skateboarder, then it may not be that big a deal. But for most people, I think you'll have a little bit of apprehension getting on one of these for the first time. Now, when it comes to cost, of course, it's smaller and it's going to be a bit better. So the startup cost here is $749. And similarly, it's practically free to, to you know run it every single mile. So overall, if you divide that across two years, you're looking at about $375. So pretty good. It's actually the cheapest option and the most convenient if you can get over that, that fear of riding a shorter board if you've never been on a skateboard before. Then you have a different company which is kind of coming into the mix here that is, is challenging Boosted and a lot of these other guys. And this is Riptide. Now, I am actually riding the R1 Elite and I've been riding it for a couple of weeks now and I really enjoy it. So the R1 Elite comes in at the similar scores as the Mini S from comfort and convenience standpoint. Now, there are some little differences like this one has handles and a kicktail. And so you can argue that maybe it's a little bit more convenient, but those again are kind of in the nitty gritty details here. I think mostly the thing to focus on is that's a shorter board. And so if you're comfortable with that, then this is going to be super convenient and great. But if you're not, then you may want to look at one of the other options. Now, when it comes to cost, it's slightly cheaper than the Boosted Mini S at $729. Um, and again, the cost per mile is pretty much negligible. So it's a little bit cheaper, about 10 bucks cheaper per year than the Boosted Mini S and far cheaper than any of the other options we looked at previous to that. So what's it going to be? Who is the winner here? Well, let's take a look at the four different things that we compared and see kind of what their best use case is. So for me, the line bike is something that a casual user would really enjoy because you don't have to carry it with you. It's not something that it will always be with you and you have to deal with that, but it's really comfortable. It is the highest priced one on our list. So you're going to spend more money, but if you don't use it that often, it probably won't matter to you a few bucks here and there, and it'll be really convenient and awesome when you do have one near you. Now, Bird falls into the same category. I think that it's casual. And from what I understand, the, the scooters themselves are a bit more 
more capable than the Lime, and that's right now that might change over time, so we'll see. But basically, it's in that kind of casual user uh, base. If this is something that you need for your commute every single day, I don't think either of these options are really the best economically. They may be decent from the comfort standpoint, but they are gonna cost you quite a bit more than either of the other two here. So Boosted, I think, is a great option for your daily driver. Now, if you aren't that comfortable on a skateboard and you only are using it for specific use cases, maybe the stealth one, the longer one, is a good option. But if you want something that you can kind of travel with and it's easier to kind of lug around, maybe the Mini S. And then of course, lastly, our Riptide board, the R1 Elite that I tested, I think it's a great option. Uh, it, it is very similar to the Mini S from Boosted. Um, it does have slight differences on speed and power, and then it has those handles, which are pretty cool. Also, as an old skater, it has a kick tail, which is nice because I can turn it around real easy and things like that. But again, those are kind of minute differences between the two. I think that if you're comfortable on a smaller skateboard, then either the Boosted Mini S or the Riptide R1 Elite are fantastic options. And if you're gonna just need something from bopping around town, not constantly all the time, then these scooters are gonna be great choices for you as well. So I'm curious what you guys think. Uh, do you have one of these? Are you interested in getting one? Leave me a comment down below, as well as thanks to Riptide for giving me the board to test out for the few weeks. It's been really great, and it certainly is a staple of my everyday commute. So let me know if you have any questions or anything about that, and don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.